Unless you've been living under a rock, you'd be aware that Skylum has just released their Big Four update, and it includes a revolutionary tool that is changing the way that many photographers are editing their work. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm incorporating this new light depth tool into my own workflow, and I'm also going to share with you the smiley face technique, which you may not have heard of before, and that's because I just made it up. Now, if you want to upgrade your version of Luminar Neo to make sure it includes this new tool and others, there's a Black Friday sale currently on that I'll put a link to in the description below, along with a discount coupon code, which is gonna save you even more. And if you're brand new to Luminar Neo, you can also take advantage of that Black Friday sale as well. I'm really excited to show you this new tool and how I'm incorporating it into my new workflow. So the first thing we want to do with any photo is do a develop raw on it and make sure we're bringing out all of that lovely raw data. Luminar's auto adjust feature is a great way to start and we can just boost in a little bit of extra shadows down in that foreground. But where I want to spend most of the time in this video is showing you light depth. Let me crank the amount all the way to 100 so it's really clear to see exactly what's going on. We certainly won't want to be using this tool anywhere near as strongly as this. However, you can see exactly what's going on, which is Luminar is interpreting our two-dimensional photo and incredibly creating a three-dimensional depth map from that. And it basically did it in real time. And we're then able to use that mask to control the brightness levels in our photo. At first glance it just looks like we're putting a brighter patch through the middle of this photo and darkening down top and bottom and in fact that is what is going on but we have a lot more control than that. So the people who have um, in the other comments of the video kind of poo-pooed this and said it's taking away your creativity Absolutely not, nothing could be further from the truth. This is actually giving us so much flexibility and creativity over our work and I'm really enjoying that. So I'm just moving those sliders around so you can get a little bit of a sense of how this tool can actually affect the photo, but let's dive into exactly what's going on so we can really get an understanding of things. So the first thing we need to understand is that we have this central component of the mask defined by this lighter area here, and that is telling Luminar not just to elevate the lighting in that area, but in this case, we've also added a bit of subtle warming. We can take that warmth down into the negative territory so we can cool things off if we want to. But we also have these control points which allow us to create a tighter or more expansive beam of light through our photo. Now, while this tool is incredibly useful, there is also an issue with it that I really wanna draw your attention to, and then we can look at ways to actually deal to that. Now, you may have noticed a slight bit of fringing occurring, and that is happening between the near ground and the far ground, and that's defined by this area here in the advanced settings. And let me just show you clearly that that is exactly what's going on. If I drop the brightness of that near ground down, and then I grab the brightness of the distant area, that's gonna clearly show us that the mask isn't perfect, unfortunately. However, if we toggle the before, and after and then jump back out. There are a couple of things that we can do to actually mitigate this. The first thing is to grab this softness slider, which is similar to just feathering a mask off. And that's just gonna create a softer bleed, a softer transition in that mask. And the other thing we need to bear in mind is that it's gonna be very rare that we need to push that amount all the way to 100. Let's just say we wanna just set this around 25% and even that may be a little high. And then we look for that fringing we don't see it. I mean, it's still there, but it's really barely noticeable at all. So the only time you're really gonna see that effect is when you're pushing that amount extremely and excessively high. And I strongly advise against that anyway. In terms of these advanced settings, we have the ability, as you saw, to darken down the near pixels, and they are defined by whatever falls underneath this band of light. So at the bottom of this mask illustration here, that is what is representing the brightness near. And you can see if I darken that down or brighten it up, that is the area that's being affected. And similarly, the brightness far is the area that is falling above that band of light. So now we have that knowledge that allows us to finally control those brightness levels. But not just that, as you saw before, we can take the hue towards a warmer color or we can take it in the opposite direction and cool things down. And that could be really nice if we want to push the sky more towards a cool blue, for example. It gives us a lot of control. Now, I haven't really set this up in any particular way, so I'm just gonna close that tool down. It is still applied, 
but I'm gonna now apply another addition of the light depth tool. And that's the really cool thing about this, just like any of Luminar Neo's tools, we can use this tool multiple times to really fine tune the result we want. And don't just think that you're confined to exactly what this tool is giving you globally across the whole photo. We're not confined to that. So the haloing that we saw over here, I'm not worried what's going on on the right hand side of the photo. All I wanna do here is just introduce a little swathe of light going across the landscape there. So what I'm gonna do is actually just reset the brightness near and the brightness far, put them at zero or close enough. I'm gonna grab the amount slider. We're gonna push that a little higher. I mean, that is, again, it's a little bit excessive, but I just wanna see exactly what's going on as I set this up the way I want. Then I can reduce that back down. And now watch this. I'm gonna go into masking, which gives us the opportunity to mask the mask. So, you know, we've already been dealing with the 3D mask created for us. And now what I can do is basically say, wherever I put this big radial gradient, that's the only place I want to see the effect that we just created. So if I hop out of that, you'll see that because that red radial gradient didn't go over this area where we had the bit of fringing over here, it's not affected. So we can get the best of both worlds. I've illuminated the little patch in the valley before and after, and it's relatively subtle, but I've not introduced any of that fringing that we saw. Okay, let's close that down and let's smash another light depth on top of this. Okay, let's start increasing the amount. Again, it's a good idea to push the amount quite high to start with, just so that you can see exactly how you're setting the tool up. I'm gonna increase the softness, just so I'm getting a little bit more feathering there. And this time I'm going to introduce a little bit of a cooling effect to the foreground. I may darken down the sky a little. Mm, no, we'll kind of leave that around there. But what I do want to do is warm up that central area of the photo, because I wanna sort of simulate the fact that there's some nice warm light just hitting the valley there. So this is our before, and after with that addition of the tool. And again, the fact that we're picking up just a bit of fringing over here, I don't really like that. So this time I'm just gonna erase that little bit of the effect right there before and after, yeah, sorted. And I may just remove a little bit from the other side as well, because I just want our viewer's attention to kind of be centralized here. And the brighter we make this side, the more the viewer's attention is gonna drift off to the left of the frame. All right, I'm gonna leave the light depth tool there. You get the idea with it, right? There's just a few more things that I would like to do. And one of them is just to clean up some of these little anomalies that we have going on around the frame. So for example, over on this side, on the left-hand side, I think that's just a little stone, but it's just catching my eye and I wanna get rid of it. So you can see how quickly Luminar is able to actually clean up areas that you want to erase. So if you're someone who doesn't have access to the generative erase tools, I would say, don't worry about it. To be honest, I rarely use them and I often go for the more traditional arrays tool. Now, I'd just like to add a little bit more impact to this photo. So what I'm gonna do is jump into the dramatic filter. And again, I'm gonna push this all the way stupidly high. We don't wanna go that high with it, but it's so easy to see the changes that we can make with these sliders. And so you can see clearly that the local contrast, when that's up high, doesn't look good. It looks like a kind of faux HDR thing. It looks too aggressive. Whereas when we push it back to the left, we can get a nice contrast effect, but it's much more subtle. We also have the ability to work with the brightness levels and kind of fine tune those, but the default of 30 is pretty good, but I want this to be a low key photo. So I will drop that just a little further. And then in terms of saturation, do we want to keep the color in it or do we want to take it away? I don't know, something like that's pretty good. But again, I don't wanna put this over my whole photo. It looks all right, but what I'd like to do is actually accentuate certain areas. So again, with my brush in paint mode, I'm gonna have my strength set somewhere around half, and I'm just gonna paint this effect in over the valley there, maybe a little bit through the central area of the cloud, and maybe even around the path here. Now in the sky, we can see this kind of mottled effect around where the very bright sun is breaking through the clouds. And I want a much softer effect there. So let me introduce you to the smiley face technique. We're gonna come into the neon and glow tool and with the neon effect, we are going to draw a smiley face where our sun is. There we go, Wee! Does it have to be a smiley face? Absolutely it does. Right, let's grab the spread. Let's grab the amount because again, we want to see exactly what we're doing with this effect. And currently it looks like we're creating something for a new sci-fi movie. But uh, don't worry, we can change the hue. You can see, look, we can go for a blue, we can go for a green, 
What do we want? Well, the sun, I want to give it a kind of orangey, yellow, red kind of vibe, something like this. Of course, I've gone way over the top, but I wanted you to see exactly what we can do with this tool. If you don't want as much color present, you can just get the whiteness slider and push that to the right, and that's just gonna desaturate the effect. And as you can see, we have a rather exaggerated glow going on at the moment. So this was before very mottled, and now we have this very big radiating glow. And I do want just a hint of yellow in this, so I'll just bring that back down. And then we can grab the amount slider, reduce that, and if we don't want it to spread quite as far, we can also work with that as well. I think I'm actually gonna keep this pretty high in this one, but then just bring the spread in somewhere around there before and after. It's a little bit over the top, but what the hey, this is a YouTube video and I just wanted to show you what was going on there. So here's our before, here's our after. As is often the case, I could keep going with my edit. For example, I find the sky has a little bit too much structure in it. So if we wanted to, what we could do is actually reduce the structure with the Structure AI tool and take it into a negative amount. And then we could just use Mask AI to select only the sky. So if I select the sky, it's just gonna apply it there. Now, while that's not the effect I'm wanting, maybe I could benefit from a little bit of it. So if I put my eraser to 74%, anything that is left behind will be 25% of that effect. So it's just gonna soften those clouds up just with a little hint of what we created, so before and after. And because I really want to draw my viewer's attention to the center of the frame, I'm going to use the vignette tool in the negative amount, so we darken those edges down. I'm gonna open up the advanced settings just so that I can play with the roundness and make sure that I'm happy with the shape of my vignette. Of course, a bit of feathering goes a long way. And if we want to, we can actually add illumination to the center of the frame. Before and after could be the way to go. All right, as we jump to the before and after, let me tell you, I shot this in 2011 and I left this photo unedited for a very long time because, well, for one, it wasn't anything really special, but to create what I wanted to do with it was going to take me a long time in Photoshop. But as you can see here with Luminar Neo, it was so easy to do a very quick edit that took me from this to this. So while you might not be able to polish a turd, we can certainly roll it in glitter. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't got Luminar Neo yet and you think it'd be a good fit for your editing, there is currently up to 77% off as part of the Black Friday sale. And I'll put a link to that and an additional 10% discount code in the description for this video. So help yourself to that. And if you own Luminar Neo and haven't upgraded to the light depth tool, which we applied three times in this edit, you can get hold of a pass via the link in the description below. And again, take advantage of that Black Friday sale. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.